what color their dads was. 80% of black men in prisons have a mother that chose the more difficult decision of staying and raising her children over surrendering them to the custody of the state. This decision was made while being fully aware of the more difficult socio and economic challenges that she would face, as well as having a self advocating partner. There, I fixed it. Why do peculiar ass niggas always run with this narrative when all it takes is a little reading and a little bit of common sense? And her argument's always the same. She kept my kids away from me. She chose the welfare over the man. And the truth is, you would rather have Uncle Sam raise your kids than you. You peculiar ass niggas want to believe that your daddy was some vanquished warrior, but he wasn't. He didn't raise you because he didn't want to. Even if you believe the keeping my kids away from me narrative 100%, all that means is that she fought harder to keep you than he did to take you. But as a man, nobody can take shit from me that I want, especially some shit that's mine. Y'all the same niggas popping bottles with a niggas telling this shit to his kids. I got something to say, and this is just my opinion. You can debate me if you want to, but remember, I know how to fight. A dad that does not take care of his kids should not be put on child support. They should be charged with neglect of a dependent, because that's exactly what's going to happen to the mother. The minute she wake up and decides she don't want to take care of her kids, they're going to charge her and lock her up. That same rule should apply to dads. I am a firm believer in the statement that a man is who his mother makes him to be. You are absolutely right. What kind of man That's did right. you raise that would have 34 children by 17 different women? That's the point. With no knowledge, real, uh, no real awareness because of how he I created it. I had no awareness when I had him. I accept my part yes. of the responsibility of the outcome of your life. Which is what? The fact that what you, you have me? had all of these children is because I didn't love you enough. I did not, and I know you're looking at me like, what the heck are you talking about? I did not provide that stability for you. I did not provide that home for you. A mother the can make, that's right, the foundation. A mother can make a home and family with just herself and one child. Mm. Okay? Hold on, I did hold on, not. hold on. Because there is a distinction between having a child and raising a child. Exactly. There's a distinction. Yep. You can't just have a child, throw money at it, put a roof over its head, make sure it's got some ravioli on the plate or whatever. <laughs> and close. That's having a child. And there's a whole Raising bunch of them a out child there. is a very different thing. That's right. All I could do was love you, but I didn't raise you. I was too enveloped in my own pain, Jay. By the time I married your father, I was broken already. I was broken. And by the time we got to the other side of that marriage, I was shattered completely. So I had nothing that I could give you. Jay, tell me what's going on. Just let your heart break. Just let your heart break, Jay. Let your heart break for the five-year-old Jay who didn't know how to feel and what to say. Just let your heart break for him so that you can heal, Jay. Because until you are totally broken open and whole, you can't be there for your children. You asked about 
should the kids be a priority? Yep. For a guy like me. And the reason why is twofold. One, dating should be indistinguishable from marriage. And since I'm demanding women to do for a man what she would do for her husband in the dating stage, why wouldn't we? It's quick, we, we quick to want to have sex with women. We quick to want her to cook, quick to want her to clean, to be helpful, to be valuable in our lives somehow. We want her to show that, we want that to show up as soon as possible. But then, and when it comes to protecting, providing, problem solving and procreating our four Ps, we want to just be selective now. We gonna be selective. We can't be selective with that. And the other reason why, that's number one. So yeah, we provide as soon as possible. We show what we would do in a marriage as soon as possible. Oh, but Shan, that's tricking off. Well, okay, now we're talking about tax brackets. What does it cost you, bruh, to bring some chicken nuggets to the kids, son? Bro, Kevin Samuels is a hero. Kevin Samuels is the GOAT. Kevin Samuels is one of the greatest to ever do it, and I'm going to explain why. He represents different things to different people, right? To a lot of men, Kevin Samuels is that fatherly voice that many of us never had. He's that correction, that get right, that get in line, that act right that a lot of us need. His relationship to women is a lot different and that's why they didn't take him the same way we did. Y'all gotta remember, we are dealing with a fatherless nation. Over the last 30, 40, 50, 75 years, we're dealing with and we don't mind correction. We don't mind straightening. But Kevin Samuels represent that father that was never there that shows up after the women or the daughters have learned to survive without him and then him telling them what they've been doing to survive is wrong. That's why they never knew how to take that man. But what he did and what he tried to do for us, for the community, it, it'll never ever be forgotten. Shout out to Kevin Samuels. Often. When a parent is missing from the home, in this case the father, there is a tendency to fantasize about what life would be like if that parent were present, especially when you grow up in an unstable situation. A father's presence becomes the fix for everything, and we almost blame the parent who stayed for chasing them away. And in your eyes, your father can do no wrong because you're only dealing with your idea of them. But you don't know them like your mother does because she was exposed to his character, not just his facade. And you might still learn some valuable lessons from your father, but in the process you may also learn the very same abusive habits that cause your parents' relationship to disintegrate. And if you fail to see him for who he is, you will repeat the same cycle. Some of y'all black men mad about Kevin Sims, but you ain't mad about your dad leaving your mama by herself to take care of you. I find it funny that anytime there's men that agree with women in anything dealing with regarding their plight in society, or if a man disagrees with the status quo that most men or many men believe is, it sh is what should be or what is, we get told that we're weird, we're pandering, something wrong. Instead of just respecting us like men and just taking it, okay, maybe that dude just don't think like me. Maybe that dude naturally identifies with what he's talking about. Maybe there's some truth there that I'm not seeing myself that I could be blind and biased to to make this guy feel this way or say these things. Instead of taking anything positive like that, most guys, a lot of guys on this app in particular, rather attack. Oh, you a simp, or oh, you a beta, or oh, you parenting, or oh, you just trying to get pussy. And it's like, it makes no sense because none of us know each other. We're in the internet. I was literally raised to be anti-oppression, so most of my thoughts started with black rights. And then from black rights, I saw the parallels with LGBTQ rights, and I saw the parallels with women's rights. And you see all these parallels in oppression. It makes it very hard to keep your same mindset that you've always had before. You don't think that I was taught the same misogynistic bullshit that every other man is taught? But at some point, you grow up. There's typically some inciting incident that makes you see in a way the light. And you realize why you was thinking fucked up. There's nothing I'm ever going to say on here that's not nothing I truly believe. I'm not going to spend this much energy just to tell somebody something that they want to hear. And whenever this motherfucker come with that and not even look at your content and take in none of the nuance you bring to fucking topics. But just taking the part where they might have felt uncomfortable or offended. 
Because I'm talking pro black shit, then I hate white people. If I'm talking pro LGBTQ shit, then I must be secretly gay. If I'm talking pro women shit, then I must be a panderer. It's like none of this shit makes sense. It gets fucking tiring, bruh. Now, when you speak on Kevin Samuels, you say if you dig deep, deep, deep to see in his message that he really wanted the best for the black community. But if he truly wanted the best for the black community, he would not have needed to put down the black community in order to do so. He wouldn't need to berate anybody, man or woman, about how they look. He wouldn't try to hold them to some fake ass white supremacist standards that he didn't follow himself. And so many people following him like to minimize the damage that he was doing with such a following. As if words don't have power. As if influence doesn't have power. As if we haven't been watching his effect on us as men in society. Specifically black men. And the influence and power that has done to the dating scene. If his big plan was to unify us, he dropped the ball horribly, brother. And the people he hurt shouldn't be policed. Men's like when a girl be by about her money. I'm telling you right now, he don't want you to be home cooking and all that, act like no wife. Don't let don't let him fool you. Trust me, he wants you in your bag. So when you in your bag, you inspire him to get in his bag. Trust me, he wants you in your bag, lady. And it ain't that he wants your money, he just want to be inspired by his woman. A real man want his woman to inspire him. I wake up in the morning, I be like, where my peace and where my money? Yeah, me and Mello don't be on all that in the mornings. You better hurry up at nighttime. Shit, yeah, you better catch me for meditation. At the meditation, I turn into this new lady. Shit. A lot of women nowadays are just too masculine. They're too masculine. Ah, bro, it's cause a lot of you niggas act like bitches, bro. Like real talk, bro. She masculine, why? Cause she's on her grind. She let you know what she wants and what she don't. Wait, she masculine, she ain't with the bullshit, right? Copy. So she masculine because she doing shit you said you was gonna do, right? You want a family, but you can't support it. You want all this stuff, but you ain't doing it. Yo, bro, she the hitter. She wearing the boots in the family because you ain't doing simple shit you supposed to do as a man. But she's manly, right? Bro, a shorty ain't gonna fuck a follow if you don't know how to lead, papa. You ain't leader, so why she following, bro? You supposed to be the head of the household. Why you ain't got your big boy pants on? Why you ain't doing it? Why she double double shifts and you ain't doing it? Why she cracking her back to pay rent and you not doing it? You supposed to be the provider, papa. If she doing the food, you got the rent and everything else, papa. That's how it go if you want to put it that way, but she's too masculine. Nah, papa, you need to get on your shit. Fuck. <laughs> Very respectfully disagree with the idea that high value men cheat. They don't. And you might say, look at all these athletes, look at all these celebrities, look at all these rich people cheating on their partners. They're high value. No, they're not. Just because you got a little bit of bread does not make you high value. It's a component of it for men. It's a very important component of it for men, but it's not everything. A high value man demonstrates consistency and discipline in everything that he does. The way you do anything is the way you do everything. So if a man is demonstrating consistency and discipline in his finances, in his health, in his fitness, in his goals, in his vision, but not his relationship, he's not a high value man. If he's getting distracted by a random girl that's trying to destroy his relationship and damage him and he's giving into that temptation, that's a weak mindset and that's not a high value man. If you lie to a girl and she sleeps sure. with you, sure. why aren't you a rapist? And is that actually what you wanted? Right, because you're, you're, it's false pretenses. Like if you could so get you, away with rape. Yeah, well, so then all of a sudden you don't have, well, maybe what you want in your soul of souls is, you know, this, this sexual encounter you'd have in paradise. You know, you want love, you want companionship, you want a maternal embrace, you want eroticism, you want deep personal contact, you want eye-to-eye -eye communication. That's all part of this fantasy, you know. Then you deceive to get mm -hmm. it, and then you get it. Well, no, you don't because you're a deceitful rapist. And so what do you get? Well, you get the corruption of your soul and the, the contamination of the thing that you want and need most desperately and that the entire human endeavor depends upon. But I think that you do get what you give. You get what you give. And if that was negativity, that will happen in death. And that's sad. Because to be die alone, nobody can identify you. Paupers die like that. Homeless people die like that. The people who society has rejected die like that. Not a man with millions of followers and a high value man as he, uh, as he coined the phrase. It is sad that that happened. 
It is sad that his death is being met with a collective yawn and acrimony. It is sad. Um, but when you die in, a, in, a, in an apartment, in the company of a stranger, in the very uh, city you were born and reared in, minutes away from the very hospital you drive by every day, that says a lot about how you lived. That says a lot about how you were perceived. People need to miss you, but to miss you and to speak fondly of you, they need to give you memories that are fond. I, I, I will learn that lesson. I will take away from this, and I and I am very sorry for his family. I'm very sorry um, for um, what the people that did love him, even though I, I think in, in society at large, we don't know a lot about them. I'm very sorry for that. But I am sorry that if this not, was not who he truly was, I'm sorry that this is how he'll be remembered. I've learned a lot. And one thing, you got to give people something to miss. I don't know if Kevin Samuels is really dead. I literally only found out about him a week ago because my boyfriend was showing me a live stream of his. But that live stream that I saw, he was talking about single mothers and how single mothers chose college. And that's why they lost their man because they didn't focus on being hands and knees down for their man. Now they're stuck with a baby alone because they didn't take care of their man. Does it not take two people to make a baby? Like where's the man in the terms of like taking care of the child then? Like co-parenting is a thing. And the thing is he doesn't want women to go to college because that empowers women to make their own choices. And he does not like women making their own choices. So then a single mother called in the line for the live stream and they were talking and he's asking like, what kind of values are you instilling into your daughter? And she was just saying like, she would like her daughter to be educated. That is one of their goals. And Kevin Samuel said to her, you are setting up your daughter for failure. All these women that go to highly prestigious colleges and get high paying jobs, they're actually just miserable, according to him. They have so many mommy issues and like trying to get all these degrees to impress their mom, which is why they're unable to keep a man because they focus too much on themselves. I would like to ask though, what is so bad about a woman taking care of herself? What is so bad about women educating themselves? What is so bad about a woman committing to take care of their child when their deadbeat dad leaves? People always blame the single mothers, like what, where's the dad? People like him want control over women and they will tell you that you are making the wrong choice because it's not the choice they're making for you. First, have to understand the mindset of these men who adore Kevin Samuels, these diehard Kevin Samuels fans. These are fatherless men. These are men who so desperately wanted a father figure in their life, and they basically treat him the same way they treat their non existent father, right? Like the same way they would pretend like Kevin did no wrong, absorb him of any issues that he caused in the community, and pretend like he brought black men and black women back together. The same way they do that is the same way they make it their mama's fault that their daddy decided not to be in their life. Like when their daddy was standing them up every weekend and saying he was gonna come pick them up and never did, and how they somehow made that their mama's fault. Like, even if he had issues with your mama, him decide that he didn't want to be in your life as if that was her fault. This is the same thing that they do with Kevin. Same logic. These men have mental problems. How do you mother your son to be a man? I had a single mom come up to me at an event and saying, my sons don't listen to me. Their father's not in their life. They're angry. What do I do? I asked her a question. So how do you present yourself to your sons? As a needy girl that's got to have the next man to somehow have a manly figure because she can't handle her boys? Or do you present yourself as a godly woman who doesn't need a man to know who she is? If she gets a great one, that's awesome, but not another project. Here's a pro promise for you for the Bible. Now listen, daughter, don't miss a word. Forget your country. Put your home behind you. Forget those bad things that have happened. Let that go. For the king is wild for you, so he's your Lord. Adore him. When you have Jesus as your man in your story, it'll break the power of what that bad boy did in your life. <laughs>